Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I would never talk to her ever again. I would never be able to hold her again. But I forgive you and have mercy on your soul. You hurt me. You hurt a lot of people. But then I forgive you. Then I forgive you. Charleston shooting, main topic. Who do you blame? You want to talk about guns? Don't call the show. I'm not interested. You want to talk about what Obama said about guns? Don't call the show. I'm not interested. I'm not going to react to that devil. I'm not reacting to the race hater in the White House. And I don't want you on my show if that's all you want to talk about. I want to talk about the loss of human life. I want to talk about how this piece of garbage coward vermin from hell took away nine lives, the best of the African-American community. And make no mistake about it, the Christian African-American community is the bedrock. It's the spine of the African-American community. It is the only hope for the African-American community. And this coward chose to kill nine of them. The coward was a racist. The coward was a segregationist. The coward was a sicko. Why didn't the coward, the brave coward, go into, let us say, a neighborhood in Baltimore run by the Crips and Bloods and express his rage there? Could it be because he would have been killed instantly? Of course. So he chose a church, a church group, the best of the African-American community, wiped off the planet in the United States of America in 2015. Christians killed in the United States of America in a church, not in Syria, Not in Iraq, but in the United States of America in 2015. To me, it's an act of terrorism. I know many of you don't want to hear that because you've come to think that only Muslims can commit terror, which is largely true around the world. But here we have an atheist committing an act of terror. A brainwashed atheist, an atheist whose soul was destroyed in the public schools, destroyed by the American Medical Association, an atheist whose soul was annihilated by drugs, drug-related offenses, dropped in and out of school. This child was raised without Christian values. He was raised with no values whatsoever. He was raised on the liberal credo, the credo of Obama and Hillary Clinton, which is do what you feel like doing, that there is no Christianity. If it feels good, do it. You want to engage in sex? Go ahead. You want to be a woman while you're a man? Go ahead. You want to use drugs? Go ahead. You don't feel good? Pop a pill. You don't feel good? Go to your crackpot with a stethoscope and it'll give you some drugs. You see, all Christian values have been driven out of the schools and the culture by the liberals. They've been replaced with a vacuum. Do as you please. Do whatever you want. So it's not only about racism here. It's about the anti-Christian drug, sex, and rock and roll culture that has turned some of our youth into robots, robots, social pathologues, sheeple with no values, some of them monsters who have no values except to destroy others. And yet there's the issue of the father who gave him a gun allegedly. Now you know it's a felony to give a gun to someone who has been arrested and has a criminal record. That's a story unto itself. The doctor should be investigated for having given him drugs. Dangerous drugs, dangerous drugs. So we have a lot to talk about on the program. If you want to shine in here, or chime in rather, 855-407-282. Will you be in church this Sunday? Do you fear something like this happening at your church uh, Sunday or another day? Does this rattle your faith? 
Does this rattle your faith in any way? Now, some of you understand how dangerous the world is in which we live. You have the Southern Christian, whatever that group, now I assume the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, which in my opinion is a terrorist organization. In my opinion, if we had a true Republican administration, they would investigate the amount of money that the SPLC has shaken down from groups they hate, and they would go after them to see why they have stirred up such race hatred in the country. You want to look at haters in the country? Look no further than the Southern Poverty Law Center and take a look at the things they've stolen from people under the guise of liberalism. That's one man's opinion, of course. I know many of you have a lot to say about this, just as the president immediately went after guns and gave a boohoo face, uh, pretending he was so saddened by this shooting in North Carolina, South Carolina, Charleston, just so saddened by it. And then he dashed off on Air Force One where he had a happy face as he raised money in Beverly Hills. Sad face, happy face, happy face, sad face. Yes, a man for all seasons. Meanwhile, the first lady and the first daughters are having a shopping trip in Italy, courtesy of the U.S. taxpayer. One of the first daughters is wearing ripped jeans as she gets off Air Force One. What a great image it is for America. And we're not allowed to say anything. The king has no clothes. The king's family has no protocol. We're not supposed to notice that. And we don't have to say a word about the mother-in-law and the daughters flying around on a shopping trip in Italy. Can you believe this? Can you believe what we're living through? And Hillary blamed Donald Trump for the shooting. True to course. I think we'll have that sound for you in a moment. Speaking of Donald Trump, he'll be on the show in the next hour. We'll ask him some great questions. Always a pleasure to have Donald Trump on the show. If you care to join the program, the phone number is 855-407-282. How do you feel about my opinion? I told you that the black church is the bedrock of the African-American community, in case you missed it. I told you that the Christian African-American practitioner is the only hope for the African-American community. What I'm astounded by is that the so-called conservatives in the media who keep talking about family values and keep talking about the black family having been disintegrated by liberalism, father being replaced by government, haven't gotten this, how they don't understand what was killed here. This was an attack upon the last vestiges of hope for the African-American community. Do you understand what this is symbolically? Do you understand how heartbreaking this is for everyone in the United States of America? Doesn't matter what your race is. I mean, your heart should be ripped out by this. I couldn't sleep last night. I was intimidated by my emotions. I frankly was intimidated to go on the radio today for fear that I wouldn't be able to control uh, this show to say what I really wanted to say. But guess what? I'm in total control. I feel that I've said exactly what I wanted to say perfectly on the Savage Nation, and I didn't miss a beat. And now I'll take your calls. I will take your calls right now on the Savage Nation. And oh, by the way, What's wrong with carrying a weapon into a church? Why shouldn't parishioners now be forewarned, whether it's another punk like this or someone who hates Christians as they're doing in the Middle East? Why shouldn't you be armed to protect yourself and your family? You understand now that uh, the church is no longer a sanctuary in America. Everything is, the doors have been kicked down everywhere. There's no sanctuary in America. Liberalism has broken the doors of every sanctuary in the country. They have polluted everything with filth. They have broken the minds of our youth with drugs. They have broken the soul of America with their pornography. And they've broken America with their disrespect for God and the family and the flag, by the way. You know, what would be the proper punishment for this psychotic punk is simple. Of course it won't happen, but I fantasize. Oh, I know there'll be a trial and they'll say he was on medication and he should be given a, a light sentence. No, 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 no. I think he should be sent to a prison that is largely African-American and the guard should be given the day off. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I'm going to be playing gospel music all day today, sort of in a memory for these nine dead souls killed by this ghoul, this monster. I don't know if you've ever been in a all-black church where gospel music is played. I have. I've never forgotten it as long as I live. I never will forget it. They're the bedrock of the African-American community, and their heart was cut out by this monster. Their, their heart was just ripped out by this monster. And so who do you blame? Oh, there's a lot of blame to go around. A lot of blame. Let's start with liberalism, which has stripped America of right from wrong. Remember the Ten Commandments used to be in the schools? Can you believe that? Do you know that when I was a kid, there used to be the Ten Commandments in a, in a public school? Thou shalt not kill? At least it told you right from wrong. Red light, green light, no more. Hey, you're born a boy, you want to be a girl? Go ahead, go for it. That's not amoral. In fact, anyone who criticizes it is a bigot. That's liberalism. You don't think it has ramifications, do you? Well, it does, damn it. Don't tell me I don't see it for what it is. And the hatred being imposed upon the people in this country by this criminal government flooding America with criminals, rapists, murderers, <clears throat> thieves. You think it isn't affecting people and driving them crazy? You think because that phony, that fundraising fraud smiles so much, it's not affecting tens of millions of people who are ready to snap? Oh, there's a lot of blame to go around. You can point your fingers at the Confederate flag. You can point your fingers at the uh, apartheid patches. I never heard of them. I don't know where he got them from. I have no idea. You can point your fingers at the AMA who dispensed drugs like Kool-Aid. You can point your fingers at the father who gave this kid a gun. You can point it at anyone you want. But at the core of it, it's the hollowing out of America's soul by the disease, the mental illness that Hillary Clinton represents called liberalism. And make no mistake about it, she's marching with the liberal flag, defending illegals who are overrunning our every institution. Meanwhile, in Europe, they're building walls. In Europe, they're saying no more. In Europe, they're saying, get them the hell out of here. In Europe, they're saying, we still have a border, a language, and a culture, and they can go to hell. That's what they're doing in Europe. Liberal Europe that Obama refers to every day in every way. Oh, there's no... Sh there's no shootings like this in Europe. There aren't? Oh, no, there aren't, huh? How, what about happened up in Norway a few years ago? You forgot that one? When that guy went insane and killed all those kids at a camp? Do you remember that tragedy? Oh, it happens in Europe. Oh, it happens in Europe, Mr. Obama. But right now, the Europeans have had enough of being overrun by Muslims, by Africans. They don't want it anymore. They're losing their identity, and they don't want it, and they're fighting back. Central European states are fighting back. They're fighting against the corrupt, degenerate European Union. Record gains for anti-immigrant party and Danish vote. Top of the Drudge Report. Greek island swamped by refugees. Mexico now deporting more immigrants than the USA. How come Mexico, which dumps their garbage on us, how come Mexico doesn't want immigrants from Guatemala? Why? How come Mexico deports El Salvadorans, Hondurans, and, uh, and, and such? How come they deport them? I thought they're telling us to take the people that they can't take care of, and they throw them on, on us and tell us that we're racist? Are you kidding me? Meanwhile, Zuckerberg, the devil, Zuckerberg, that phony, only wants cheap foreign labor, as does Microsoft, as does every company in America. There's a lot of blame to go around for the madness in this country right now. But all the blame goes to the top. The Obama administration is giving tips to illegals on getting work permits. They're destroying our borders, language, and culture. And don't think people aren't snapping. You say, wait a minute, Savage. What does this have to do with the shooting in, in uh, Charleston? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thought I'd bring it up, though. Thought I'd bring it up, though. Thought I'd bring it up. You don't like my rhetoric? Too damn bad. I represent America, not Hillary Clinton. She represents a bunch of phony bankers and banksters. 
And she claims she's one of the regular people. Are you kidding me? She represents the worst evil the country could ever imagine. My friends, we are at the end of the road here. Either we defend this nation or we lose this nation. You know what that means, don't you? It doesn't mean go out and shoot anybody. It means speak out and be heard. Or you'll be overrun like you don't exist. Now let's go back to the terrible tragedy of the loss of nine beautiful lives in Charleston. And I want to hear what you have to say about that. Mark on WABC, go ahead, please. Yeah, how you doing? Um, I'm a new listener. Um, I love your show, and uh, I wish you would run for president. Um, that, that's one thing you're never going to see. I wouldn't even run for dog catcher. Yeah. I am the farthest thing from being a politician you could ever imagine. Well, but what what do you think about this shooting now in, in South Carolina? I, I think it, it's a horrible thing, but, you know, the thing I, I, I'm looking at here is that this racial problem in this country and all the terrorism that's going on, I think it's all coincide with the liberal. They don't have a life, so they do crazy things. This is sick. These poor people. And like you said, the nine great people, the African-American people that are religious and, and, they're, hel- and they're wholesome. It's horrible. But what I'm trying to say. Well, look, look who this lunatic picked to kill. Take a look at that. Look who this cowardly little piece of garbage chose to gun down. Defenseless, elderly Christian people. Can you imagine anything more cowardly in your life? Yeah, like you said, if he went to uh, New York... Yeah, yeah, if the big, brave racist took his uh, handgun, his forty five, and walked into Baltimore and challenged the Crips of Bloods to a shootout, you'd say, oh, well, he really is a man by, you know, he's really standing up for himself. But he didn't do that, did he? He walks into a church, they welcome him in, into their prayer session, and he shoots them one by one. Holy God, it doesn't get any lower than this, does it, Mark? Mark, are you a father? Yes, I am. This Sunday is Father's Day. I'm sending you a copy of my great best-selling novel, Countdown to Mecca, to warn you about the threat from Islam. I won't mince words. The global threat from Islam. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. So this show today is dedicated to the nine beautiful souls who were taken from the world by this... I don't know. There's no word for it. What am I going to go make, make words up? They're going to make me feel better. He's a ghoul, a monster, a monster. There's no other word for him. It seems to me, though, that the entire nation is now experiencing what Charles Manson tried to create, which is helter skelter. I know those are chilling words. You know, this little SOB wanted to start a race war. Did you know that that's what he intended to do? He wanted to trigger a civil war in the United States of America. The last time we heard something like this was from the lunatic Charles Manson, who slaughtered people, do you remember, in the Los Angeles area many, many decades ago, wanting to blame it on blacks so it would start a race war, bringing about what he called helter skelter. Obama has created helter skelter in this country. In so many ways, it's hard for me to imagine you don't understand what he's done. Every day you wake up and you see this divisive president turning black against white, white against black, blacks against police, police against blacks, Asian against Hispanic, Hispanic against white, gay against straight, straight against gay. This man has thrived on a strategy of helter skelter. There's a lot of blame to go around. Blame anyone you want. Pick whoever you want to blame because you'd be right. Right now it's helter skelter. The country is broken. This man has broken America over his psychotic knee. WABC, Mike, who do you blame for this tragedy? Uh, Dr. Savage, I blame um, all forms of media for this, including movies, TV shows, video games, and music. Uh, which I Isn't believe- it interesting that Harvey Weinstein, who was an anti-gun nut, who was lobbying against the NRA, has said that he's going to produce a movie to make sure our guns are taken away from us, Harvey Weinstein's entire fortune was made on violence, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and isn't it interesting that Sean Penn, the biggest phony in the history of the acting world, 
who, who pretends to be anti-violent and anti-gun, most recently made a real dud called gunman, where he waves a gun around and shoots people. How does that work? How do these hypocrites get away with it? Uh, I think it goes deeper than just liberalism, Dr. Savage, unfortunately. Well, okay, go deeper. Um, you know, I, don't, I, I hate to actually go along the lines of uh, conspiracy theorists, but uh, I believe there are anarchists, you know, deep within our society or possibly even within government that just want to see this type of thing happen. It's interesting your borderline now onto the conspiracy theory because the minute this was reported yesterday morning, someone I know who's much smarter than I am and a lot younger than I am said to me he thought that this person was released by the government to do this. I said, "Are you come on. I said, you believe that? He said, yes, I believe it. He said, I believe they have these people under their control, under their spell, on drugs, and when they want them to, they release them to set these things off. I said, I really don't go along with that, but you're not alone in that conspiracy theory, are you? Well, no, but I, I believe that, uh, you know, for the regular normal person, the average person who's of sound mind, uh, the media, you know, we can determine, we can distinguish between right and wrong. However, for those of weak, weaker minds, they cannot distinguish between, you know, fantasy and reality. Uh, and this is Oh, well, he knew what he was doing. No, no, see, but I think you're not correct here. This subhuman who did this in the church said that he knew what he was doing. He said they were nice people. He knew they were nice. He even thought of not killing them. They were so nice. And then he killed them anyway, wanting to start a, a race war, a civil war. And he even said that he left some alive so they would tell the world what he did. Do you know that? Yeah, I've been watching it for, for you know, since it happened. All right, so, so he knew what he was doing. He was totally rational. There is no mental illness here. This is cold-blooded first-degree murder. Nine counts of first-degree murder. He should be given one appeal and executed. That would be too good for him. Could this go along the lines of copycatism? I don't know. I have no way of knowing. Well, you know, you can blame it on video games. You can blame it on uh, the Hollywood moguls who produce violence and pornography and filth. You can blame it on a lot of people, and everyone's blaming the, the, the uh, you know, I'm blaming liberals, then people are going to blame conservatives. I get it. I know how this works. That's exactly what this kid wanted which is divisiveness. You understand that? All right, my friend, countdown to Mecca, Father's Day. You got a copy going out to you. Let's take uh, the next caller on the Savage Nation. 855-407-282. Let's go to WMAL in Washington, D.C. Pat, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi, yes, yes. And uh, as far as your last comment, you're absolutely correct. It is not mental illness, not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, no, he's, t he's totally rational. He knew who he was killing. And he knew why he was killing them. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, here's where we're going to differ, though. And I, this is what I think happened. All right, seven years ago, there was a scared, small-minded man, his dad, most likely a xenophobe, right? Definitely. A who? Wait, wait, who? Who? His dad. His dad was um, definitely uh, influential in what happened. And, well, well, well and we know the father gave him the gun. At least we think so. But what more do we know about the father, Pat? That gave him the gun for his 21st birthday. He just got it. All right? So, and, and that's what he used. All right? But he not, those weren't the only tools. He spent seven years of uh, indoctrinating this kid with the same language. And you know what his language was? It was, we need to take back our country. Where have we heard that before? But wait a minute. Wait, 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 but you're mixing apples with oranges. African Americans were here before most of the white people in the country. Not at all. Not at all. This, this same language. No, no, you're not hearing me. Do you know that African Americans were in this country before most of the white people, except for the colonists? No. I, I, are you there? Do you understand history or not? Yeah, yeah, please continue. Well, I'm saying African Americans, you can't blame this on xenophobia. They're not foreign. His, what, his African Americans are not foreign. They're part of America. Okay, well, scratch, scratch xenophobia. It's just pure racism. His words were... Yes, racism is different than xenophobia. Let's not mix the two up. Because I'm taking back my country. Over and over for the last seven years since the black man took office, we've heard those words. Now, that may not be what you meant, but that is what apparently he uh, garnered from 
being told this over and over again for the past. All right. I've heard that argument. I'm not going to sit here and re refute your opinion. There is a lot of hatred towards Obama, but it's not about his race. It's about his divisiveness and his anti-American policies. It has nothing to do with his race. It wouldn't matter if he was green. The man is anti-American and divisive. He's not. You think he's doing a, a service to the African-American community, Obama? Um, I think that he is doing a service to America. That's his job. So you think uh, you so you you think he's doing a good job. You're not offended by the abuse of power. You're not offended by the first lady and daughters on a trip to uh, Rome on Air Force One on a shopping trip. What if a white president's daughter and first and wife were on a shopping trip on Air Force One right now and the daughter got off the airplane with ripped jeans? Do you think the media would be screaming about it? Oh, she doesn't represent America. Oh, there's a lack of protocol. Oh, how come they're doing that? You don't think you'd be hearing that if it was a white president? Probably, probably. The thing okay, is so what I'm saying to you is... There's more to this than just hatred of Obama because of his race. It's because of his behavior and the abuse of power. Yeah, no. Well, he has continued George Bush's policies almost to the letter. All right, so now it's George Bush. Okay, soon it'll be Nixon, then it'll be George Washington. I mean, it, right, Look, I, I know I'm not going to change your mind, and I understand that we're all entitled to our opinion, and I, I respect your opinion, although I disagree with it totally. Obama is hated by millions, not because of his race. Some may hate him because of his race, but most who hate him hate him because he's a diehard, divisive man who has wrecked the country with his helter-skelter. He may as well be Charles Manson. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You know, he has created... Do you know what he did before... Do you know what he did before Baltimore burned? I mean, he stirred the people up, didn't he? Uh, let me tell you what he's done. He has created helter-skelter by actively repeating the black perspective, and America doesn't want to hear that. I'm done. All right, go ahead. That's fine. You're you're welcome to be uh, go or stay. Uh, thank you for the call. That's all I can say. I don't expect everyone calling to agree with me. In fact, we welcome those who don't agree with me to call, because that's what makes for a a, a healthy dialogue. And be believe me, I think we better vent verbally today. We need a safety valve. We boy, do we ever need a safety valve? And whether you believe me or not, really is important to me. I won't say it doesn't matter. It does matter to me. But I got to tell you that I couldn't sleep last night. I was up all night. I was agitated. I didn't know how to pr approach this because when I saw the faces of the survivors and I saw the hurt in their faces and I said, I know these kind of people. I've been around them before. I, you know, <laughs> they're the bedrock, not only of the African-American community, maybe of America itself. They're part of the granite. Let me put it to you that way. The Christian the practicing Christian African-American community is part of the granite of America. Granite is a mixture of colors, is it not? There are black, there's gray, isn't it? You look at granite, how granite is formed and what it is consists of, all of the consistency, uh, the pieces of granite. The African-American churchgoer is part of the granite of America. And this psychotic devil has taken out a big piece of this granite of America. That's all I'm saying to you. And I think that's as apt a metaphor as I can come up with today. We should all be bleeding inside. I can't get it out of my mind. I was up all night thinking about the families and the woman. Did you hear her today? Did you hear what she said? She lost her mother, didn't she, or her daughter? She lost her daughter? L listen to this woman, and you'll know what I'm talking about. You took something very precious away from me. I would never talk to her ever again. I would never be able to hold her again. But I forgive you. And have mercy on your soul. You hurt me. You hurt a lot of people. But God forgive you. And I forgive you. See, I don't understand that forgiveness. It's not in me. I'm an Old Testament type. An eye for an eye. I have no forgiveness in me for this. None. Not a scintilla. I'm an eye for an eye guy. And the only punishment that would suit this is to throw him into an African-American prison and give the guards the day off. Not going to happen. I just said that's the metaphor that I would, I would use. So what can I say to you? Would you be in church this Sunday? Has this affected your faith? Do you fear something like this happening at your church or synagogue? I do. I've expected it for many years. 
And I could tell you certain things, certain precautions I have taken since the early, uh, late, late 70s. But I don't think I have to express it to you on this show. I don't want to put it in words. Every time I have gone into a house of worship, I have prepared myself for such an event. I did not want to be on my knees begging for my family's life. And I'll leave it at that and take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I'm the only one in the media who understands context. I could give you some context. This kid is the Charles Manson of our time. Write it down. You heard it on the Savage Nation. He has done, by killing these innocent people, exactly what Charles Manson tried to do with the Tate and LaBianca murders, which is to start an apocalyptic war between the races, between blacks and whites. That's what he said he wanted to do, by the way. Did you know that? He wanted to trigger the helter-skelter scenario. Manson wrote that. This kid wanted to do the same thing. But you don't know context. I do. Luckily, I have spanned a number of decades so I can put two and two together. Let's pray to God that cool heads prevail. I'm not so sure they will, by the way. I'm not so sure cooler heads will prevail. I'm waiting for Al Sharpton to show up and throw a, a, some gasoline on the fire. Surprised they kept him uh, on a leash. Richard on KSFO, go ahead, please. Yeah, no guns in churches. That's my opinion. Well, wait, well, wait a minute. This guy had a gun in a church. He killed these people because there were no other guns. That's all right. They were the, where they should have been. And well, Wait a minute. What's all right? Them getting killed was all right? No, it's not all right. But if you bring guns into churches, then churches are no longer sacred places. Now, if the wicked want to bring guns into churches, then they can. Well, but then you ought to put a metal detector at the front door. How about that? Do you think that's a good idea? No, 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 no. Churches have well, then you're living in a dream world. You're living in a dream world. You still haven't learned anything from this event then. So it could happen again tomorrow. No guns in churches. Why? No Why? Church. Why? Why shouldn't people be able to defend themselves? It's for the same reason you don't cuss in church. Now listen, My friend, there. listen to me. There are Christians on the battlefield right now who carry Bibles and believe in God. So being able to carry a gun and being a Christian and not... Two different. You don't have. You know. Understand. You don't have to be a an atheist to carry a gun. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that churches are sanctuaries, and there's. Well, sanctuaries. he he invaded a sanctuary and killed nine innocent, beautiful souls. That's right. And had there been someone in there with a gun, they would have killed him after the first person was shot, or even before it. I belong to a church where the Second Amendment is fully supported, and most of the members uh, have weapons, but. Uh, I've never seen a gun in church, and I don't think I ever will. Well, I think they should think about think twice about that. That's my opinion. What what is wrong with what is wrong with self defense? I don't understand it. How is that not not Christian? Nothing, just not in the churches. Now, there's scriptural uh, there's scriptural a uh, scriptural reference that's very specific on this issue. It's in the Book of Mormon, and the saints are being persecuted and they're being killed for their beliefs. And one of the prophets can stretch forth his hand and keep them from being killed. But the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit says... Well, that's, well, I'm not a Mormon in that case. I'm, I'm an Old Testament type of guy. I'd like to see a guard at the front door with an Uzi or whatever they can use today. But there's an interesting... Uh, you know, how come in Israel they believe in having a guard at the front of the synagogues after so many wonderful practitioners of the religion of peace known as Islam uh, slaughtered Jews in synagogues? How come they decided that they would rather have someone there with a gun? How, how did that happen? I think they're letting worshippers in with, with weapons either. That's all I'm saying. All right. Well, I'm not here to argue with you, my friend. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to uh, value systems. I say bring weapons to churches. My friend, I'm sending you my novel, Countdown to Mecca, for Father's Day. Who do you blame for the shooting in South Carolina is the issue. Helter Skelter. That's what this maniac wanted. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, 
Adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. about the devil who killed those innocent black people and i'm relating it to the charles manson the charles manson theory of helter skelter to start a race war in america because this punk said that he wanted to start a civil war do you know that or not that's been left out of all of the news reports except one he's the charles manson of our time only he's committed a, a crime a murders worse than what manson did I'm surprised no one in the media has noticed this. I'm sure it'll be on Fox and Friends before it leaves my mouth. And I'm sure the leg crosses will have it by tonight. I'm positive Martha Washington will make reference to it, ripping me off as usual. But okay, doesn't matter what people do. As Lao Tzu said, it doesn't matter who rips your ideas off as long as your ideas are used. I am telling you, this guy is the Charles Manson of our time. It's like history repeating itself. It's the scenario that Charles Manson wanted to start a race war which he called Helter Skelter, which was committing these horrible murders in the Hollywood Hills and then blaming it on blacks. And then there would be a murderous rampage against blacks by frightened whites. Well, now it's the reverse. And we're all fearing a murderous rampage against whites by blacks to provoke an internecine war of near extermination. That's what we could have happen here in this country right now. Make no mistake about it. You may think it's behind us. You're mistaken. Oh, I wish I could sit here like a Pollyanna and say it's going to be forgotten. It won't be forgotten. It won't be forgotten. And by the way, it shouldn't be forgotten. I didn't say that there should be murders in reaction to the murders. No, but I said it will not be forgotten, nor it should, nor should it not be forgotten. These were the bedrock of the African-American community. They were the bedrock, the granite, part of the granite of America. Granite is a multicolored stone. Granite. Look at granite. Gray, black, white, right? That's granite. They were part of the granite of America. And this, this, this subhuman blew away a big portion of the granite of this country. It's not going to heal so quickly. Don't fool yourself. You may think it's in the news cycle and it's over. But I don't live with the memory of a, of a goldfish. I grew up in another generation. And I don't think everyone in this country has the mindset of a millennial who's already moved on to, uh, to something else. So who do you blame? Uh, everyone's got someone to blame. Harvey Weinstein, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Spielberg. Violence, 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 violence. And then preaching about peace. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love it? Sean Penn, Mr. Peacenik, Mr. Anti-Gun, does his last bomb called Gunman, waving a gun around, that impotent fool running around with a, with a, a psycho act actress to show how potent he is. It's so patently clear to me how sick these people are. And don't think they're not the devils. They are. And don't think they have nothing to do with this violence. They do. Okay, yes, then there's politics. Some will blame conservatives. Some will blame liberals. Some will blame this one. Some will blame that one. Fingers will point in all directions. That's exactly what Charles Manson wanted. And that's exactly what this punk wanted. Make no mistake about it. Now, will cool heads prevail? I hope so. I would put a restraining order on Al Sharpton. I wouldn't let him cross state lines to incite a riot. I mean, if, you, if President Obama really wanted to stop repercussions from this tragedy, this I would say this Holocaust against the black community really is what it is. Nine in one church? Wow. If Obama really wanted to stop it, if Attorney General Lynch wanted to stop it, they would put a restraining order on Al Sharpton and all the other race baiters who went to Ferguson and went to Baltimore. And they can do it. There's a federal law in the books, by the way, that would prevent those troublemakers from crossing state lines to incite a riot. She could do it. Let's see if she's real. Let's see how real Loretta Lynch is in preventing these troublemakers from crossing state lines to start a riot in South Carolina. That's all she has to do is say, hey, 
I'm attorney general. No one's coming from out of state to start a riot in this state. And if you if you show up anywhere near it, we're going to arrest you under a federal anti-riot statute, which exists, by the way. It was passed in the 60s to stop this from happening. I haven't heard Loretta Lynch say that, strangely enough. I haven't heard Obama mention it. He dashed off to a fundraiser with the uh, the important people from Hollywood. Oh, while the missus and the children are on a shopping trip in Rome. That's right, at your expense, once again, abusing us, spitting on us. You think that we're not full of resentment for what this man is doing? You think we don't see it? I see it. If I see it, you see it. It's that simple. Now, I know you want to talk, and that's good. That's good. There's so many problems in this country right now. From so many causes, it's hard to believe. Company that got millions from U.S. taxpayers now profits Chinese owners. Did you hear about this one? Oh, he didn't make it to your desk at the AP? The good news is electric car battery maker A123 Systems is back to turn a profit. The bad news is taxpayers don't figure to see any of the $133 million of the federal government spent and the estimated $140 million in tax credits and subsidies secured from Michigan to help the company take off in 2009, only to see the company crash, declare bankruptcy, and then get bought out by a privately held Chinese conglomerate. Did you hear this? Didn't hear Obama talk about that, exporting jobs, sending money to foreign companies, flooding America with illegal aliens. Haven't heard about that one. Yep. 855-407-282. I could play Obama, but I don't think I want to. I, I really can't avoid. I can't, I can't take the anger right now. He blamed guns. Yeah, well, who else did he blame? Did he look in the mirror recently for what he's been doing to trigger hatred in the country? Has he taken a good look in the mirror while shaving in the morning? All right, let me take some calls. I've got some wonderful things to read. And at the bottom of the hour, Donald Trump to talk with us here on the Savage Nation. New York City, WABC. Kenny, thanks for being with us. What's your point? As a black man myself, isn't this such a contradiction? You see a young white man sitting amongst elderly black people worshiping together. That's what Christianity is about. I was brought up in the church, and you visually see that picture. It's a beautiful thing, but then the contradiction is for him to sit there over an hour and to hear the Word of God, which is what they must have been doing. That's what prayer service is. I grew up in the church. And to still go ahead and shoot these people, you have to be another type of evil, Dr. Savage. I mean, he couldn't have gone to the hood and taken the worst, like you said, of the black community. Right, right. If he was such a brave man who wanted to get even with blacks for whatever sick reasons, he could have gone into the hood and taken his gun out and seen what happened. God, they're preaching that these elderly... I, I Look, I, I'm, I'm heartbroken over this. You may not take this as sincerity and think I'm making it up just for effect. I got to tell you, I'm sick over it. I couldn't eat dinner last night. I couldn't sleep. I'm sick over it. You have to be another type of evil to sit there over an hour to hear the word of God. I don't understand it. I don't understand how a human can be like that. I see it going on in the Middle East, by the way. I see Muslims doing it to Muslims. I see Muslims doing it to Christians. I see Muslims doing it to a Yazidis. So I know this evil exists. So obviously, obviously it's a universal evil. And there's always an excuse. Oh, it's drugs. Or he's there's no excuse for it. Don't, don't sell out. These people always got an excuse for him. Oh, there's just drugs. Or well, let me ask you, Kenny. You're a very rational man. We're not arguing at all. I made a statement that we should consider bringing weapons into churches to protect ourselves. Do you think I'm wrong? I don't like guns. I've never picked up or touched a gun in my life, so I'm mm. afraid of guns. I, can, so I understand what you're saying. All right, so let's say not the parishioner. What about a church getting someone at the front door with a weapon to protect them? That's reasonable. That's logical. A security guard, someone who's trained with it. That's not, Okay, fine. So let's have a security guard like the Israelis do at synagogues. Most of the Orthodox are afraid of guns in, in Israel. They're terrified of their own shadow. All they do is pray all day. So they now put armed guards at the front after the, after the, uh, the, uh, the Muslims went in and slaughtered them most recently. But as opposed to just everyone having a gun, that scares me a little bit. A certified I, I understand it would scare most people, but uh, I, I, I'm not scared by that thought. But nevertheless, that's my, you know, it's one man's opinion. Somebody's got to protect the churchgoers. Somebody has to step up. And, and whether we raise private funds to provide security for the churches now, and let's start with the black churches, but I don't think that they're the only ones at risk right now. To me, any church group, any synagogue is vulnerable right now to attack. 
As a black man, I've also written to Al Sharpton, and I'm black. And now, now, Al Sharpton does some good things for the black community, but I've written to him and told him, you can't just be upset only when something is done to a black person. If Martin Luther King was about all humanity, not only when something was done, but Al Sharpton has to be just as upset when a black person does something to a white person. And I'm a black person saying this. I've written to him about that. You can't keep playing that game. And that's where he's wrong. Well, we know he's a demagogue, and we know he's profited from racial division his entire life. He's made his fortune on racial division, as has his lousy lawyer, uh, who's enmeshed in a rape uh, accusation right now. These people have feasted on the race, the, the racial divisions in America. It's, sh it's shocking. Kenny, you're a rational man. How would you resolve this? How do you stop? How do you stop militant blacks from reacting to this? Let's clear the air here. What would you do? What I'm saying, as a black man, I want white people to know out there, not all blacks are, are for Al Sharpton. Or of course not. We know that. We know he's an anomaly. He's a freak. All black people use the N-word. Most black people do not use the N-word. They, they think, there's mostly these kids and some of them from the ghetto, but trust me, in the black community, most people do not use the N-word, okay? And most black people... Believe me, I know that as well. I understand what the popular culture has done to debase, frankly, the African-American community. It's mostly the bad always gets most of the publicity, you know? That's, that's just talk. No. Right, it's like the degenerate sluts from Hollywood. We have to look at them and then think that they represent every woman in America. And then everyone sees that, and they think, well, that represents all black people. No, most black people don't use the N-word. Most black people want good things, and they, most people don't hate white people. We want to get along. Tell me about it. I know, that it. I know that as well, which is why I'm most, effect, uh, most affected by this. From the first time I went into a black church in Harlem when I was young, I was 18 years old. I, I talked about Brother Billy on my show where he was a preacher, a white preacher in the streets of New York, their 42nd Street. He wrapped my, my brain around his, his thumb. I gave him a hitch in my old Volkswagen and he took me up to his church. It was a black church, by the way, where he preached. They let him preach. And when I walked in and heard the gospel singing, I, I was affected by it in a way to this day I remember. And I've been in other churches where I've heard the gospel singing. I know these are the bedrock of America. And my analogy of the black church being part of the granite of America is very apt, don't you think, Kenny? Yes, it definitely is. You're absolutely right about that. I was brought up in the church. I'm not as active in it. But it is the foundation for a lot of people, black, white, or whatever, for Americans in general. God and Christianity is part of the stature of this whole country. And look who he chose to attack, the best and the kindest and the nicest people in the African-American community. This is the part that, that's eating me up here. Is there something so wrong with this picture? Who told him to go in there? What is the family here? What has his family got to do with it? How deeply ingrained are they with this uh, situation? I don't believe this came out of one man, do you? No, I'd like to know where, where he got this from. Was this from his parents? Because a lot of times, I, I don't know. I'd like to find out from the family, was this stuff that's being preached? In? Yeah, I think the father needs to make a statement as soon as possible without a lawyer. Yeah, yeah I'd be around. to hear about this. But that, well, Kenny, my, look, we're all upset by this, and it's not going to go away overnight. And I think that there are some uh, militant people out there on both sides of both races who are plotting their next move. And that's the danger here. And I sincerely believe that Loretta Lynch, our attorney general, needs to come out and forcefully state that anyone who crosses state lines to incite a riot will be arrested by the federal government immediately. There is an anti-riot statute in the federal uh, law. She needs to say that. I don't know why they haven't said it. Kenny, are you a father? Uh, no, I'm not. But my final statement to you, Doctor, is I, I, Well, if you know a father, I'm going to give you a, a gift for Father's Day, which is Sunday. Countdown to Mecca. Make your final statement, please. I also want to say that all black people do care about whether it's black. If a black person hears somebody white, we cry about it, too. Don't let them fool you and think we all... Tell me, I know, I know that. I guarantee you, if I fell down in the street and there were black people coming out of a church, they'd pick me up faster than would the atheists marching by on the way to their next parade. Thanks. Kenny, thank you very much. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Racing legend. I remember this song as a kid. God it derived, by the way, from the African-American spirituals. Well, play it already. Play it loud in the middle of it. You have to teach everybody Show everything. Me that river. All right, turn it off. It's not going to work. You got to get to the point where he's really singing loud about that lucky old son game. Nothing to do but <clears throat> turn around heaven all day. That's how I feel today. 
And that was based upon a slave song where people who were working day and night and they looked up at the sky from the, to relieve themselves of the pain and they, they started singing about the sun. Got nothing to do but move around heaven all day and they imagine what it would be like to be free. That's what that song means. And you know, a day like today is so difficult for all of us. I know if you've been listening to the show for over an hour now, it's because you have agony over this, the pain. This is no joke. I'm not Obama where I can give a false crocodile tear one minute and jump on Air Force One and be in Hollywood taking the accolades to, you know, six hours later. I can't do that. I'm sorry. You know, the man of a thousand faces, I'm not. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, and this is not going to go away so fast. And we're talking about who do you blame, by the way. You know, who do you blame? Drugs, the doctors, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Weinstein for the pollution and filth they put out, the violence in Hollywood. Who do you blame? Right-wingers, left-wingers. You, you take your choice. Someone's going to blame some, everyone. Everyone's pointing fingers right now. And that goes back to the helter-skelter scenario of Charles Manson. And this kid wanted to start a civil war. Let's pray to God that Attorney General Lynch takes my advice. And I hope she's getting this information from someone. They know that I'm pretty sharp, and they know I'm pretty smart, and they know that I'm not what they say I am. They know who I am. Believe me, I'm on their radar, and I've been on their radar a long time. They can learn from me. She needs to step up to the plate right now and say that she's going to invoke the Anti-Riot Act of the 1964 era, I believe. And she will arrest anyone, any out-of-state agitator who comes into South Carolina to spread hatred and start a riot. She'll arrest them on the spot. Federal marshals will arrest them. Now, that would be an attorney general we could cheer. She'd be more popular right now than the president himself, who was nowhere to be found, incidentally. I don't know where he is. Maybe he's shopping in Rome with the family. I don't know where he is. Where's the leadership today? Where are the Republicans? Have they said a word on this? Not one word. Nothing. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're, we are all reeling from this disaster, this murder, uh, the series of murders in South Carolina. We're asking who's to blame, and we're looking for leadership. We have no leadership. We have nowhere to turn. Not one Republican has stepped up. And I suggested just now on this show that the first thing that needs to be done is that the president, instead of blaming guns, should have said anyone who crosses state lines will be arrested under the Anti-Riot Act. You're not going into South Carolina to stir up a riot. That's what should have been done, but I haven't heard it. Well, we have a leader on the line right now, someone that I would vote for in a heartbeat, someone I would support right from the get-go, and that's Donald Trump. Donald Trump, welcome to the Savage Nation. On this sad day, I'm glad you're with us. Hello, Michael. It is a sad day, is it not? Nine beautiful people executed in a church? Terrible. By a maniac. By a, a young man that is just an absolute sick, demented person. It's, it's a very sad thing, Michael. It's a very sad thing. Donald, look, let's talk about the election. That's what this is all about. Let's move on to that. And, and you know me. I'm straightforward, and I'm not trying to set you up, but people have called the show since you announced, and I, I support you from the get-go. But many people are saying, well, look, how do you know he's real? How do you know he's not going to split the Republican vote by running as a third-party candidate, pulling a Ross Perot? Would you answer that question? Do you think it's a, a, a fair fear? Well, first of all, I have to say I'm real. And, you know, you saw a poll that just recently came out in New Hampshire. This is from before I announced, before. So a lot of people didn't think I was running. And I was in third place, which is pretty good. And I think the reason I do well in that isn't because necessarily, I think I'm a nice person. I think you know I'm a nice person. I love giving to charities and helping people, the wounded warriors and everybody else that have been horribly treated. The vets have been horribly treated. But, but you know, the fact is, they, you know, a lot of people, they don't think I'm going to give up my life in order to do this. And we have to make America great again. And I came in third in a recent New Hampshire poll, and everyone's sort of like going, how is that possible? And again, considering they don't I'm running, that's pretty amazing. Now, I'm very serious about it, Michael. I think our country is run by incompetent people. We have an incompetent president who truly doesn't have a clue. I don't think he has a clue. You know, a lot of people think he's a bad person. I don't know if he's good or bad. I can tell you what he is. He's incompetent. He doesn't, have, he doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, you look at Sergeant Bergdahl 
where we get Bergdahl, the trader, we get Bergdahl, they get five killers that are out there on the field now trying to kill everybody. And, you know, this is the way we would negotiate. This is the way he negotiates. We, you know, the Iran deal is a disaster. The trade deals are all a disaster. Every, every country is beating us in trade. And believe me, if I win, that won't happen. That will not be happening, that I can tell you. Well, well, let me ask you this. Given the antipathy of the Republican establishment to your candidacy, because they're afraid by your, your simple, plain, honest truths and what needs to be done, would you consider running on a third-party ticket? And you know what that would do. That would elect Hillary, wouldn't it? Sure. I'm never writing anything off. I'm, gonna, I'm running as a Republican. I am a Republican. I'm a conservative. Okay. Well, you said it right now. You said I'm running as a Republican. That's, that's really what I said. I said he's not going to split the ticket. Yeah. I'm, I'm running as a Republican. I want to go all the way. I don't like a lot of these people. It's not even like. I don't respect some of these people. They, right. They shouldn't even be running for office. They have no right, right. to run for office. Yeah, you know, most of them are. They're in, Donald, you know that the best and the brightest generally don't go into politics, you being the exception. And you said years ago, run the country like a business, uh, not like uh, God knows what it is, a welfare state. Right. You and I both agree there should be tariffs on, on Chinese goods. Don't you agree? Killing us. They're, they're, they're tariffing our goods. They're putting tariffs and taxes on our goods. And we talk about free trade. You know, the problem with free trade is you need speak to smart people to negotiate for. I don't mind. I love free trade. I'm a free trader. But right. China's not a free trader. They're killing us. You know, when Boeing sells planes to China, they take all the secrets of Boeing. That's part of the deal. You're going to have to give us all your patents, all your Ugh. secrets. You're going to have to give us everything. I mean, it's brutal you do business with them. I have a friend that tries to get stuff into China. He can't get it in. Finally, he gets it in, and they charge him tax. And yet we think they're so wonderful. And, you know, they put out a statement about me from the Chinese embassy. I was very mm. proud of that, of course. But they put out a statement that Mr. Trump is wrong, essentially. Mr. Trump is wrong. We have a wonderful partnership with the United States. Uh -huh. a partnership. Well, of course they love it. I love it, too, when we have stupid partners that don't know what they're doing. You know, Sure, like, like the, the battery maker, A123 Systems, which was given $133 million in, in federal taxes and whatnot, tax credits and, and grants. They went bankrupt. The company was then bought by a Chinese company, and now they're making a profit and they're not going to pay back the federal government. What a deal they got, hey, Donald? Uh, we, are, we are incompetent. You know, the, the, the people that we have negotiated, we have great people. We have Henry Kravis and Carl Icahn, and, you know, I could name... A hundred guys. I could also name guys that have big names that aren't very good. You know, they're overrated. But I know the good ones, <laughs> I know the bad ones. I could put people in charge of China. China doesn't have a chance. I could put people in charge of Japan. You know, Japan sends in millions of cars over the years. Millions. When was the last time you see a Chevrolet in Tokyo? Do you think there's any Chevrolet in Tokyo? Maybe the two. You know, how many Chevrolets do you think we have driving around in the no, Donald, I see the ships coming in San Francisco Bay every day. My heart breaks. I see these ships laden with foreign cars, and I don't understand why there's no tariffs on them. Well, how about this? Ford goes out and announces they're going to build a $2.5 billion plant in Mexico, right smack in the middle of Mexico. They're going to build, and you know what they're going to do with the plant? They're going to make cars and parts and trucks and stuff. They're going to send them to the United States, no tax. Now, explain to me, because I'm sort of a natural business. I built a great company. You see that because I released my financials and everyone's sort of shocked. They had no idea. Right. They were, you know, they were hoping that they wouldn't be so good. And they were, yeah, they were hoping they were hoping you were broke and that you, you owed more money than you earned. I know that's what they were hoping. They were they were they were disappointed, weren't they? Right. Oh, well, they were shocked because I'm a private company. They didn't know. So they were thinking it was two billion or one billion or nothing. Or maybe I was worth nothing. And it turned out to be nine billion and the. <laughs> Much higher than that, it will be. Much higher than that. But $9 billion, And by the way, very little debt. Unbelievable. So they were shocked. You know, they're going, wow, that we had no idea. Because, again, as a private company, these magazines and all, who treat me fine? But they don't know what. And, and I'm not doing that as a braggadocious thing. I'm just saying... I know what I'm doing. I would not let Mexico get away with it. I would tell Ford, you're going to pay a 35% tax every time you make a car and send it in. Because what are they doing? When they make cars in Mexico, that means we're not making that car in the United States. It's very simple. And that means we're not employing our people. Do you know how many companies have gone to Mexico to, to build? I mean, it's, you look at New England. The place was a ghost town. So, yes. look, we need – and I love Mexico. I, th I love the Mexican people. I have a lot of relationships with them. But they know they're getting away with murder. It's like China. China is the number one abuser, though. What they do with their currency manipulation is incredible. And our people are so stupid, they don't even cover it in trade packs.
So you look know, when I Donald, when you announced this week, I watched the little people, the, the Lilliputians attack you. You know what I called them? I said they're toe dust compared to him. I saw these little men and little women trying to rip you apart, and I said they are toe dust. That's all they are. They're jealous of this man, and there's a lot of jealousy for successful people in this country, as you well know, Donald. Who would you pick as a VP candidate? Well, before I say that, you have like a guy like George Will. His hatred for me is unbelievable. What he doesn't tell you, you know, you take his glasses off and he doesn't look like a smart guy anymore, right? But, but he <laughs> yeah, was. Call uh, him, let's call him toe dust in a bad suit. Right. I have a place, Mar-a-Lago, and he was there about 12 years ago. He made a speech. I didn't go to it because I find him very boring. And he's actually wrong on many things. He was wrong on Iraq and wrong on plenty of things. But he, the hatred this guy has, I said, wow, I probably should have gone. But he was just, you know, I just didn't want to go. And it was years ago, but he never forgot. And that's the only reason. He hits me, and they do hit well, well, me. Why, why, he didn't like that you didn't go to his speech at Mar-a-Lago? Absolutely. He was very upset about it. He was very, very upset about it. But wow. you know, I have other things to do, and I couldn't go to his speech, and he never forgot it, and he hits me. And that's why. That's the way these guys... By the way, his speech was terrible. I had a friend that went there. They said it was terrible. So and I didn't irre- anything. Donald, a guy like George Will, his time has gone a long time ago. He's irrelevant. No one reads him. But the issue is you. You're running. You're real. You don't really want to run a, a, as a third party candidate. You say you're a Republican, even though they have a great fear of you. Would you be willing to consider a great man such as Ben Carson as a VP candidate? Or is it too soon to ask that question? Michael, it's too soon to talk. I like Ben Carson. He's a nice guy. I know him. I've actually seen him at some of my places. And he's really a nice guy. He's got a very nice wife. I met them both. And, and you know, they're nice people. But even Ben Carson, you know, it's like he doesn't have the experience to run something like that. He he's a surgeon, and it's different. It's not. Uh, so you say I we need someone. You need someone with a killer instinct like you. We need a killer who's smart, and not a killer. I know a lot of. Well, no, I say that in a, in a sports context. I grew up watching boxing matches, as I'm sure you do, because you have them in your hotels. And I was told since I'm a child by my father, the reason one man beats another, he said, Michael, watch that fight. The guy with the killer instinct usually wins. I never understood it till I got older and got punched a few times to understand what the killer instinct meant. You know, the funny thing with me, it's really, I watch this stuff and I watch these guys and these pundits and many of them are very good and many of them are just terrible. But the funny thing with me, so I go to the best school, the hard, just about the hardest school in the world to get into, the Wharton School of Finance. I did really good. I'm a good student, all that stuff, like a smart guy. You know, you can't be a dummy and get in. But you go into that school. I come out, I build a tremendous real estate empire. I started in Brooklyn. My father taught me a lot, but you know, it was a small company. And now it's a massive, I have some of the greatest assets in the world. I, I write a book called Trump, The Art of the Deal. It's the number one selling business book of all time, or very close. You know, somebody will say, oh, somebody else. I mean, so I always like to get, but just about. I think it's the number one, but it's like just about the number one selling book of all time. I do a television show. Everyone says, oh, the show will never make it. Fifteen copies of The Apprentice, they've all failed. Everybody copied it. They've all failed. It's still going. You know, they renewed. They're begging me. I mean, they would love me not to do this, they, but I, I'm doing it. I told them I'm doing it, but... It's now 14 seasons of The Apprentice, one of the most successful shows on television. I mean, a tremendous success. You remember the first season. It was like the, one of the biggest shows ever. That was a show that was supposed to never make it. All these copies, Martha Stewart copied, everybody copied it, and they didn't make it. Okay. And then I read, I shouldn't be on the same stage with some governor who is a nothing or a senator who's a nothing. I'm not right. saying that a senator is nothing or a governor is I'm just saying some of these people shouldn't be on the stage. But I, I sort of laugh. I build up this tremendous company, some of the great real estate assets of the world. The television show is a big hit. The book is a big hit. Other books are big hits, too, by the way. Uh, you know, you go to the best college and, and you do great, and then all of a sudden you're not supposed to be on a stage, and you have other people that frankly can't shine your shoes and it's okay for them to be on. <laughs> Donald, Donald, you and I see the world the same way. You know, when I supported you the other day on this show, I was shocked that that low-life writer at the National Review, whose name I don't remember, wrote such a horrible thing about you and said that your father gave you your empire, gave you your money, and you're a, he was a slumlord. That is such crap. 
I happen to know that your father built some of the finest middle class apartment blocks in New York, both in Brooklyn and Queens. I know it for a fact because one of my relatives lived in them. They were beautiful buildings. Why do they do such things? Well, because, you know, the National Review is going out of business, in my opinion. I think it's doing very badly. William Buckley, William F. Buckley, I knew him. He was great. I was a young guy. He was a much older guy. But right. he was a great guy. And, right. Nash, and he must be spinning in his grave. They have a bunch of lowlifes over there. And you know the other thing they love? You know, like when Carl Icahn or Kravis or Leon Black, any of the great business people, when they use the bankruptcy laws, you know, they throw something in a bankruptcy, they, they don't even write stories about it. If I use that, if I do that, oh, Trump went bankrupt. I never went bankrupt. But they always love to say that was the same lowlife, the guy that wrote for the net. No wonder the National Review has no power anymore. It's, it's disgusting. Well, they've what attacked I me for years, and I understand that they're, they're run by these Lilliputians. But it's one thing to not like someone. It's another thing to outright lie and say your father was a slumlord. I took offense at that, and he wasn't my father. Well, you know what? My father was a terrific guy, and he built middle-income housing and low-income housing, and he did a right. great job for a lot of people, and he was a really good person, and he taught me a lot. And frankly, he did me a favor because he didn't want me to go to Manhattan, and I wanted, and he never went to Manhattan. And I right. said, Pop, I want to go to Manhattan. I want to build those big buildings. He said, Son, that's not our league. We don't want to do that. It's not our league. And I went. And, you know, that was mm. another thing. I guess I can add that to the book, and I can add that to, you know, all the other things. But, look... Our country is in serious, serious trouble. And, you know, my theme is very simple. Make America great again. We can make it great. We've got to take back our jobs from China. And I don't even mean all of them. We have to take back some of this stuff that's going on. You can't buy. If you want to buy a television, I just ordered 4,000 televisions for a big project I'm, I'm doing someplace. And, I, you know, I order televisions all the time. I have Doral in Miami. I, I've always, you know, they come from South Korea. Now, we protect South. They're making a fortune off us, by the way. If you want a television set that's made in America, try finding one, okay? I used to, I used to have an Emerson when I was a kid. Where'd it go? Different, right. But now South Korea bought that company, probably. They're all out in South Korea. So, although Sony is still in Japan. So, we have a choice. South Korea is or Japan. So, I come, I, I get bids. And all the bids, I mean, I'm... I, Look, I've bought thousands and thousands of these things over the years, but so I understand where they come from. But you have LG, you have uh, Sanyo, you have this, that. They're all South Korea. And I'm saying to myself, wouldn't it be nice if we made televisions? I actually tell my people, is there a company that makes televisions in the United States? <laughs> Get the bids, and they're all from South Korea. Now, when South Korea has a problem, they're making a fortune off us, right? When South Korea has a problem with North Korea, where the guy starts rearing his head and he wants to, you know, start throwing around the nuke word and everything else... We immediately send our ships over. We send it. We get nothing. They don't get anything. Anything. We get you know, nothing. We don't get it. We don't get a jar of uh, kimchi from them in exchange. Hey, Michael, Saudi Arabia makes a billion dollars a day. A billion a day. Think of it. A billion dollars a day. When they have problems, and watch Saudi. You know, I was the one that predicted the the war in Iraq. I was the one that said it's going to be a disaster. I did that in '04. In fact, it was a big article. They just reprinted it from uh, Reuters in uh, Donald. 04. Can you stay to the? Can you stay with us to the top of the hour? Or do you have to go? Um, yeah, I can. I will for you. You know why, Donald? Because I have to make some money for my uh, the wonderful people who support this show, or else I'm out of business. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and come back with the greatest Donald Trump right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. What puts I can talk with Donald Trump for the rest of the uh, weekend, right through Father's Day, but we have only a minute, and I want him to conclude with what he wants to say. Let's throw it right back to Donald Trump. Donald, what do you have to say to the millions of people who listen to the show and hear you as a leader who does not blame the American people for what's going on, but blame an incompetent divisive government for what's going on well first of all mike it's great to be with you michael and and really is and i'm serious about this i'm i'm giving up a lot by doing it these politicians give up nothing they're all talk they're no action they're never going to bring us to the promised land they don't know what they're doing and we're in a bubble we're going to have a problem like you've never seen before we have to take our jobs back from china we have to take our jobs back from mexico and all the other places that are just ripping us so I'll do it, and they understand I'll do it. The other side knows. I deal with them all the time. I beat them all the time. So, you well, know, a lot of Donald, the next Mexico is now deporting more 
illegal aliens than the, than the United States. I love your idea of the Great Wall. Donald Trump, thank you so much, and good luck. I hope you do run. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that, once again, innocent people were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. It doesn't happen in other places with this kind of frequency. And it is in our power to do something about it. When the bodies were picked up off the floor already, he was attacking guns. With a tear coming down uh, his face, the crocodile tear, then he dashed off to Hollywood. Uh, raising money at $32,000 a head. Yeah, oh yeah. Soon after crying over the murders, he was uh, raising money, uh, $33,000 at Tyler Perry's Beverly Hills home. And then he sat down to break bread with, uh, guess who? Oh yeah, Katzenberg and Spielberg, as I said. When I say Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg, I ain't kidding. They're the ones who gave us all the violence, aren't they? They're the ones who put these images in the heads of so many millions around the world, don't they? And yet they talk against guns, don't they? Don't they talk against guns and against the evil, stupid, geeky American who needs a gun? Yeah, don't they? Doesn't Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg do that for a living? Sean Penn, Mr. Anti-Gun, Mr. Peacenik, does a movie, a flop called Gunman. Can you imagine? Then, then, then the next day he's giving a speech against guns. So don't tell me that there's not a lot of blame to go around for this travesty and tragedy in South Carolina. Everyone's hearts are broken over this. Everyone, black and white, know that. They know that. They know that this, this psychopath who did this was a coward and evil, soulless evil. You want to say racist? Say racist. You want to say active terror? It is an active terror. I don't, I don't have a problem with those words. And there's a lot of people to blame, a lot of blame to go around. Many of you blame conservatives, many of you blame liberals, uh, many of you blame the president for his rhetoric. Okay, blame all you want. But nine beautiful people were slaughtered like sheep in a church in the United States of America in 2015. So who do you blame? Who do you blame? Who do you blame? And how do you stop the next maniac from doing such a thing? Well, the first thing you do is you have Loretta Lynch as Attorney General get up today, tonight, right now. She should have done it already and say, I want to be very clear. Any outside agitator who tries to cross state lines into South Carolina to promote a, a, a riot in any way will be arrested on the spot by federal marshals. There is an anti-riot act, by the way. It was put in in the 60s when we had the same kind of helter skelter going on in this country. And I am surprised that this peace loving administration is not invoked the anti-riot act yet instead of blaming guns and the american people that's all obama does blames the second amendment blames the american people and then rushes off to a fundraiser that 855 and, and mrs obama i'm sorry i know we're not supposed to say these things but when i saw a picture of her on a shopping trip with the daughters and the mother-in-law i got so angry the other day i don't know how to contain i got so angry the other day can you imagine if George Bush, George Bush's family had gone on a shopping trip to Rome on Air Force One? That's to start with. That's number one. Ask me what all of the Republicans would be saying about it. Or if George Bush's family had flown to Rome on a junket like this with a mother-in-law living in the White House like a squatter. Tell me what the media would be saying. Why, Mrs. Bush has no right bringing a mother-in-law in the house, blah, 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 people's expense, blah, 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 blah. You haven't heard a word, have you, from the toe dust in the media? And then the daughters, I'm not allowed to say a word. I, as an American, were, were I was embarrassed. 
She got off the plane with ripped jeans. She is so, it's unbelievable to me. They have no sense of protocol. No one dares say a word to them like, listen, darling, you may like your ripped jeans at the private school you go to, but you can't wear them getting off Air Force One in Italy. It's an embarrassment to the country. But no one said that. The mother didn't say it. She was busy lecturing at a, uh, at a Muslim school the day before in London, looking at all of the headscarves saying, you're, uh, you're us, I'm them, you're me, I'm you. You look like me, I look like you. I wonder what Muslims thought about her daughter getting off an airplane with ripped jeans. I'm not allowed to mention any of this, huh? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to the toe dust in the media. So there's a lot of dissension right now in America, a lot of confusion, a lot of anger, a lot of rage. People are just at the boiling point. And this lunatic picks the weakest link in the African-American community. This coward, this low-life coward, wants a race war. Why didn't he pick up a gun with his crack of friends and go into, into the hood and start screaming racial epithets and take, see if he can take someone out? I didn't see him do that. He didn't go to Baltimore. He didn't go to Baltimore with his gun, the big shot. Look who he picked, innocent Christians. As I say, this country is made of granite. There's granite in the backbone of America, and it's still there. Make no mistake about it. And granite is composed of specks of gray, black, white. If you look at granite, I've looked at granite. It's up in the Sierra Nevada. I love granite. It's my favorite stone. They are the bedrock, part of the bedrock. The matrix of America was assassinated in South Carolina. No one has said that because no one has the duende that I have in, in radio. Make no mistake about it. Nobody understands what actually happened in the terms of a spiritual, on a spiritual level. This is a spiritual assassination of the heart of America, the granite of America, the backbone of America, any way you want to put it. And we are all affected by it. We're all weakened by this, mur this, this, these murders. This is not about guns. This is about something much more diabolical than guns. It's about the death of a nation's soul. A nation's soul that has been hollowed out, hollowed out by the very people Obama is meeting with in Beverly Hills. Jeffrey Katzenberg. Yes, they've done an awful lot of good for America. I know. They produce great entertainment. Every other day it's another gay or lesbian theme or a transgendered theme or an anti-American theme or a mocking Christian theme. Oh, they've done great work. And they've laughed all the way to their 400-foot yacht. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy, and that's who he chooses to dine with after the Charleston shooting. He may as well had, have had dinner with uh, the uh, video game manufacturers. It would, about, it would have had about the same kind of emba embarrassment for me. So I got an email. What does it mean to be an American from a, an outsider? You know, I'm running the uh, scholarship program, and we picked five winners. It will be announced on July 2nd, which is coming up so fast. And these five winners are going to win $20,000 a piece, which is a lot of money for them. I got an essay today. It's not an entry. You got to hear this one. He says, I've had a long relationship with the USA ever since. He said, this is not an application because it ended. He said, but I wanted, I wanted to send this to you of what it means to be an American from an outsider's point of view. He said, I've had a long relationship with the USA ever since I was a child. I've watched cartoons, listened to music, seen your movies on the big screen as well as on the silver screen. I felt both animosity and kinship towards the brother in the West. Without the intervention during World War II, we in Sweden would all be either Nazis or under communist rule. Now we are part of the democratic world with, with free speech and the rule of law, not despots. For all this, we thank you Americans. But it is obvious both for you, Michael, and for me that America of today is on the wrong path. A path of control, elitism, and the destruction of liberties. As a believer in individual rights, I observe the decline of your formerly supreme values. The chimes of freedom that once rang strong for all the world to hear now seem replaced by police brutality, Obamacare, open borders, and a rapid influx of totalitarian doctrines, be it socialism, Islamism, or fascism. It all holds a promise of disaster in its hands. But the politics of a semi-totalitarian state rarely has anything to say about the people of the nation. He writes, I would be ignorant if I believed that this dark vision is a vision of the true American. I have seen him, the powerful father, the patriarch. I have met her, the strong mother, the guardian. I've seen them work hard to build a life, 
separate from the state without dependence on any higher power but the good Lord. I see how they struggle hard to maintain their independence from the state. I see how it is getting increasingly hard to maintain this independence. I see the snake of totalitarianism slithering up behind their backs. Socialized health care, mass immigration, high taxation, federalized education. It seems that it is no longer Europe that mimics the states, but the other way around. And it breaks my heart. But back to the topic, Michael Savage, what does it mean to be an American today? It means that you need to stand up and fight this adaptation to the old world, a world some of my own ancestors fled in order to escape the dominance of the government. Oh, how it grieves me to see you on the same path as Europe. I cry for the true American who was witnessing this firsthand. I cry for you all. As a true American, please hold on to your guns and values. Free yourself from the bondage of politicians. Read your constitution and understand it. Listen to the words of your founding fathers and understand that the bonds they ripped apart are once again gripping your wrists, pulling you back to the oppression from which your ancestors once escaped. A true American believes in freedom. I know you can once again be that beacon of hope that used to shine so brightly. Just reach for a lantern and a match. Light it up and you will lead the way again like so many times before. That came to me today. I got chills up my spine. This is a brilliant essay. And he wasn't applying for the scholarship. And he's from Sweden. And he sees what's going on in this country today. And I thought it was so well put that I read it on the Savage Nation. There is a cartoonist named Diaz, Dixon Diaz. And he was just dropped by the LA Times. And he writes little three squares in a row. Boombox by Dixon Diaz. Now picture three panels in a row. <clears throat> two little characters. And one of them says there's a super PAC called Ready for Hillary. The second panel says, what exactly does it mean to be ready for Hillary? And the third panel says, it's like being ready for a prostate exam that will last for eight years. And the little character says, ouch. The next one in the boom box by Dixon Diaz, picture three panels left to right. Left panel, two, two little figures next to a tree. <clears throat> one asks, why are Democrats so afraid of the Tea Party? Next panel, because they want the government to obey the Constitution. Next panel. Is that like asking atheists to obey the Ten Commandments? Worse. Let's see. I'll read the next one from this cartoonist. Uh, here's one. Some of them are not radio ready. Here's one. Why are liberals so hot for gun control laws? Any fool knows that criminals don't obey laws. The other character says because it has the word control in it. <laughs> here's the last one from Dick Dixon Diaz. Three panels left to right. Obama called the Constitution an outdated and deeply flawed document. Panel two, didn't he take an, uh, an oath to uphold the Constitution? Panel three, he must have thought the word was hold up. I'll be right back. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. What do you blame for this assassination of these nine beautiful souls in South Carolina? A lot of blame to go around. A lot of blame to go around. Then he lies, the president, saying mass killings are not common in Europe. Really? Really? He doesn't remember Charles Hebdo by the Muslims? Two gunmen entered the office of a hysterical magazine in France and murdered 11 people and injured 11 more. And then in the marketplace catering to Jews, another five were murdered. I guess he doesn't know that that's in, in Europe. I guess he doesn't know France is part of Europe. Oh, we know France is allegedly an advanced country, isn't it? I guess he didn't attend the anti-terror rally in Paris because he didn't want to acknowledge that the terror was conducted by Muslims who we won't even mention, right? Remember every other leader of the world was in Paris in solidarity with the Parisians after the murder of the Jews and the cartoonists except your leader, the golfer, wouldn't go because then he would have to admit it was done by Muslims? I guess that's why he says that such slaughter doesn't occur in other countries. Guess he got his head in the sand. What do you think about that one? Karen on WABC in New York. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, I am disgusted and sick to my stomach over this man. He is a liar. He is the Antichrist in person. <laughs> I, I take it you wouldn't vote for him again if he ran. 29-year-old son sat here while we watched this and he's saying 
do they not see that this guy is evil? He is. All right, I get it. I feel the same way. I've said it every day. I've said it every day, lying about Europe, that there's no violence. And I just reminded everyone about the Hebdo murders, which he didn't even go to the anti-terror rally. And then he and with a crocodile tear, then he rushes off to Hollywood to dine with Katzenberg and, and Spielberg. How much more cynical does it get? Was there an wannabe? And so is his. I, I don't even want to. We don't even say their names in our house. Why <laughs> is it that his wife and children are allowed to fly around on the public dime on a shopping binge in Rome. Why is there no comment on this? It's the, the whole generation of entitlement, and it makes me sick to my stomach because I told my kids they wanted He is abusing his privilege as president. He is golfing as I speak. He's golfing in the middle of this tragedy, in the middle of a drought in California. He's on a golf course. You hear this? It, he has this golf course in, his, in the backyard. He breaks about it all the time. All right, <laughs> so you don't like Obama. Who do you blame for the shootings in South Carolina? Certainly not him and George Soros and the, the people that instigated forget the other supposed I can't even say all right so you don't you don't blame any of them all right all right listen I'm going to send you countdown to Mecca for Father's Day is, is there a man in the house that poor cop Lord. is there a, is there a man in the house Karen is there a man I, in your house yeah my husband is a, was a boxer and he is mentally incompetent now all right well then I can't send you countdown to Mecca because it's not written for mental incompetence yeah. Thank you for the call. Uh, 855 407 I'm sorry. He was a boxer. Now he's mentally incompetent. There's no joke in that one. The bubbles build up, and eventually the poor guy is uh, punch drunk. Terrible sport. I watch these guys beat each other up. I, I don't know how, how they can handle age 50, let alone age 40. But, you know, some men love the, the warrior life. They love fighting almost to the death. It does something for them. And some of us like to sit here and try to save the country one day at a time verbally. And in some ways, we're considered verbal warriors. Not quite the same as putting yourself on the front lines as a cop, nor on the front lines in Syria or Iraq or Afghanistan. We get it. There's no bullets flying. But don't fool yourself. This takes a heavy toll on those of us who do this. And I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you, it may seem easier than it is to not miss a beat to say things correctly, to make a point, and to move millions of people. And I want to thank you for listening to this show so religiously. Remember, Father's Day is this Sunday. And don't you dare forget your husband or your father. And I want you to send them Countdown to Mecca. You can get it in the bookstore. I love this novel. I wrote it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Gospel music all day today, sort of in a memory for these nine dead souls killed by this ghoul, this monster. I don't know if you've ever been in an all-black church where gospel music is played. I have. I've never forgotten it as long as I live. I never will forget it. They're the bedrock of the African-American community, and their heart was cut out by this monster. Their, their heart was just ripped out by this monster. And so who do you blame? Oh, there's a lot of blame to go around. A lot of blame. Let's start with liberalism, which has stripped America of right from wrong. Remember the Ten Commandments used to be in the schools? Can you believe that? Do you know that when I was a kid, there used to be the Ten Commandments in a, in a public school? Thou shalt not kill? At least it told you right from wrong. Red light, green light, no more. Hey, you're born a boy, you want to be a girl? Go ahead, go for it. That's not amoral. In fact, anyone who criticizes it is a bigot. That's liberalism. You don't think it has ramifications, do you? Well, it does, damn it. Don't tell me I don't see it for what it is. And the hatred being imposed upon the people in this country by this criminal government flooding America with criminals, rapists, murderers, thieves. You think it isn't affecting people and driving them crazy? You think because that phony, that fundraising fraud smiles so much, it's not affecting tens of millions of people who are ready to snap? Oh, there's a lot of blame to go around. You can point your fingers at the Confederate flag. You can point your fingers at the uh, apartheid patches. I never heard of them. I don't know where he got them from. I have no idea. You can point your fingers at the AMA who dispense drugs like Kool-Aid. You can point your fingers at the father who gave this kid a gun. 
You can point it at anyone you want. But at the core of it, it's the hollowing out of America's soul by the disease, the mental illness that Hillary Clinton represents called liberalism. And make no mistake about it, she's marching with the liberal flag, defending illegals who are overrunning our every institution. Meanwhile, in Europe, they're building walls. In Europe, they're saying no more. In Europe, they're saying, get him the hell out of here. In Europe, they're saying, we still have a border, a language, and a culture, and they can go to hell. That's what they're doing in Europe. Liberal Europe that Obama refers to every day in every way. Oh, there's no shootings like this in Europe. There aren't? Oh, no, there aren't, huh? How? What about happened up in Norway a few years ago? You forgot that one? When that guy went insane and killed all those kids at a camp? Do you remember that tragedy? Oh, it happens in Europe. Oh, it happens in Europe, Mr. Obama. But right now, the Europeans have had enough of being overrun by Muslims, by Africans. They don't want it anymore. They're losing their identity, and they don't want it, and they're fighting back. Central European states are fighting back. They're fighting against the corrupt, degenerate European Union. Record gains for anti-immigrant party and Danish vote. Top of the Drudge Report. Greek island swamped by refugees. Mexico now deporting more immigrants than the USA. How come Mexico, which dumps their garbage on us, how come Mexico doesn't want immigrants from Guatemala? Why? How come Mexico deports El Salvadorans, Hondurans, and, uh, and, and such? How come they deport them? I thought they're telling us to take the people that they can't take care of, and they throw them on, on us and tell us that we're racist? Are you kidding me? Meanwhile, Zuckerberg, the devil, Zuckerberg, that phony, only wants cheap foreign labor, as does Microsoft, as does every company in America. There's a lot of blame to go around for the madness in this country right now. But all the blame goes to the top. The Obama administration is giving tips to illegals on getting work permits. They're destroying our borders, language, and culture. And don't think people aren't snapping. You say, wait a minute, Savage, what does this have to do with the shooting in, in uh, Charleston? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thought I'd bring it up, though. Thought I'd bring it up, though. Thought I'd bring it up. You don't like my rhetoric? Too damn bad. I represent America, not Hillary Clinton. She represents a bunch of phony bankers and banksters. And she claims she's one of the regular people. Are you kidding me? She represents the worst evil the country could ever imagine. My friends, we are at the end of the road here. Either we defend this nation or we lose this nation. You know what that means, don't you? It doesn't mean go out and shoot anybody. It means speak out and be heard, or you'll be overrun like you don't exist. How do you feel about my opinion? I told you that the black church is the bedrock of the African-American community, in case you missed it. I told you that the Christian African-American practitioner is the only hope for the African-American community. What I'm astounded by is that the so-called conservatives in the media who keep talking about family values and keep talking about the black family having been disintegrated by liberalism, father being replaced by government, haven't gotten this, how they don't understand what was killed here. This was an attack upon the last vestiges of hope for the African-American community. Do you understand what this is symbolically? Do you understand how heartbreaking this is for everyone in the United States of America? Doesn't matter what your race is. I mean, your heart should be ripped out by this. I couldn't sleep last night. I was intimidated by my emotions. I frankly was intimidated to go on the radio today for fear that I wouldn't be able to control uh, this show to say what I really wanted to say. But guess what? I'm in total control. I feel that I've said exactly what I wanted to say perfectly on the Savage Nation, and I didn't miss a beat. Oh, by the way, what's wrong with carrying a weapon into a church? Why shouldn't parishioners now be forewarned, whether it's another punk like this or someone who hates Christians as they are doing in the Middle East? Why shouldn't you be armed to protect yourself and your family? You understand now that uh, the church is no longer a sanctuary in America. Everything is, the doors have been kicked down everywhere. There's no sanctuary in America. Liberalism has broken the doors of every sanctuary in the country. They have polluted everything with filth. They have broken the minds of our youth with drugs. They have broken the soul of America with their pornography. 
and they broke in America with their disrespect for God and the family and the flag, by the way. Will you be in church this Sunday? Do you fear something like this happening at your church Sunday or another day? Does this rattle your faith? Does this rattle your faith in any way? Now, some of you understand how dangerous the world is in which we live. You have the Southern Christian, whatever that group, now I assume the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, which in my opinion is a terrorist organization. In my opinion, if we had a true Republican administration, they would investigate the amount of money that the SPLC has shaken down from groups they hate, and they would go after them to see why they have stirred up such race hatred in the country. You want to look at haters in the country? Look no further than the Southern Poverty Law Center and take a look at the things they've stolen from people under the guise of liberalism. That's one man's opinion, of course. I know many of you have a lot to say about this, just as the president immediately went after guns and gave a boohoo face, uh, pretending he was so saddened by this shooting in North Carolina, South Carolina, Charleston, just so saddened by it. And then he dashed off on Air Force One, where he had a happy face as he raised money in Beverly Hills. Sad face, happy face, happy face, sad face. Yes, a man for all seasons. Meanwhile, the first lady and the first daughters are having a shopping trip in Italy, courtesy of the U.S. taxpayer. One of the first daughters is wearing ripped jeans as she gets off Air Force One. What a great image it is for America. And we're not allowed to say anything. The king has no clothes. The king's family has no protocol. We're not supposed to notice that. And we don't have to say a word about the mother-in-law and the daughters flying around on a shopping trip in Italy. Can you believe this? Can you believe what we're living through? I want to talk about the loss of human life. I want to talk about how this piece of garbage, coward, vermin from hell took away nine lives, the best of the African-American community. And make no mistake about it, the Christian African-American community is the bedrock. It's the spine of the African-American community. It is the only hope for the African-American community. And this coward chose to kill nine of them. The coward was a racist. The coward was a segregationist. The coward was a sicko. Why didn't the coward, the brave coward, go into, let us say, a neighborhood in Baltimore run by the Crips and Bloods and express his rage there? Could it be because he would have been killed instantly? Of course. So he chose a church, a church group, the best of the African-American community, wiped off the planet in the United States of America in 2015. Christians killed in the United States of America in a church, not in Syria, not in Iraq, but in the United States of America in 2015. To me, it's an act of terrorism. I know many of you don't want to hear that because you've come to think that only Muslims can commit terror, which is largely true around the world. But here we have an atheist committing an act of terror, a brainwashed atheist, an atheist whose soul was destroyed in the public schools, destroyed by the American Medical Association, an atheist whose soul was annihilated by drugs, drug-related offenses, dropped in and out of school. This child was raised without Christian values. He was raised with no values whatsoever. He was raised on the liberal credo, the credo of Obama and Hillary Clinton, which is do what you feel like doing, that there is no Christianity. If it feels good, do it. You want to engage in sex? Go ahead. You want to be a woman while you're a man? Go ahead. You want to use drugs? Go ahead. You don't feel good? Pop a pill. You don't feel good? Go to your crackpot with a stethoscope and it'll give you some drugs. You see, all Christian values have been driven out of the schools and the culture by the liberals. They've been replaced with a vacuum. Do as you please. Do whatever you want. So it's not only about racism here. It's about the anti-Christian drug, sex, and rock and roll culture that has turned some of our youth into robots. Robots, social pathologues, sheeple with no values. Some of them monsters who have no values except to destroy others. And yet there's the issue of the father who gave him a gun allegedly. Now, you know it's a felony to give a gun to someone who has been arrested and has a criminal record. That's a story unto itself. The doctor should be investigated for having given him drugs, dangerous drugs, dangerous drugs. 
Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The devil who killed those innocent black people. And I'm relating it to the Charles Manson theory of Helter Skelter to start a race war in America because this punk said that he wanted to start a civil war. Do you know that or not? That's been left out of all of the news reports, except one. He's the Charles Manson of our time. Only he's committed a, a crime, a murders worse than what Manson did. I'm surprised no one in the media has noticed this. I'm sure it'll be on Fox and Friends before it leaves my mouth. And I'm sure the leg crosses will have it by tonight. I'm positive Martha Washington will make reference to it, ripping me off as usual. But okay, doesn't matter what people do. As Lao Tzu said, it doesn't matter who rips your ideas off as long as your ideas are used. I am telling you, this guy is the Charles Manson of our time. It's like history repeating itself. It's the scenario that Charles Manson wanted to start a race war, which he called Helter Skelter, which was committing these horrible murders in the Hollywood Hills and then blaming it on blacks. And then there would be a murderous rampage against blacks by frightened whites. Well, now it's the reverse. And we're all fearing a murderous rampage against whites by blacks to provoke an internecine war of near extermination. That's what we could have happen here in this country right now. Make no mistake about it. You may think it's behind us. You're mistaken. Oh, I wish I could sit here like a Pollyanna and say it's going to be forgotten. It won't be forgotten. It won't be forgotten. And by the way, it shouldn't be forgotten. I didn't say that there should be murders in reaction to the murders. No, but I said it will not be forgotten, nor should it not be forgotten. These were the bedrock of the African-American community. They were the bedrock, the granite, part of the granite of America. Granite is a multicolored stone. Granite, look at granite. Gray, black, white, right? That's granite. They were part of the granite of America. And this, this, this subhuman blew away a big portion of the granite of this country. It's not going to heal so quickly. Don't fool yourself. You may think it's in the news cycle and it's over. But I don't live with the memory of a, of a goldfish. I grew up in another generation. And I don't think everyone in this country has the mindset of a millennial who's already moved on to, uh, to something else. So who do you blame? Uh, everyone's got someone to blame. Harvey Weinstein, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Spielberg. Violence, 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 violence. And then preaching about peace. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love it? Sean Penn, Mr. Peacenik, Mr. Anti-Gun does his last bomb called Gunman. Waving a gun around, that impotent fool. Running around with an, a, a psycho actress to show how potent he is. It's so patently clear to me how sick these people are. And don't think they're not the devils. They are. And don't think they have nothing to do with this violence. They do. Okay, yes, then there's politics. Some will blame conservatives. Some will blame liberals. Some will blame this one. Some will blame that one. Fingers will point in all directions. That's exactly what Charles Manson wanted. And that's exactly what this punk wanted. Make no mistake about it. Now, will cool heads prevail? I hope so. I would put a restraining order on Al Sharpton. I wouldn't let him cross state lines to incite a riot. I mean, if President Obama really wanted to stop repercussions from this tragedy, this, I would say, this Holocaust against the black community really is what it is. Nine in one church? Wow. If Obama really wanted to stop it, if Attorney General Lynch wanted to stop it, they would put a restraining order on Al Sharpton and all the other race baiters who went to Ferguson and went to Baltimore. And they can do it. There's a federal law in the books, by the way, that would prevent those troublemakers from crossing state lines to incite a riot. She could do it. Let's see if she's real. Let's see how real Loretta Lynch is in preventing these troublemakers from crossing state lines to start a riot in South Carolina. That's all she has to do is say, hey, I'm attorney general. No one's coming from out of state to start a riot in this state. And if you show up anywhere near it, we're going to arrest you under a federal anti-riot statute, which exists, by the way. It was passed in the 60s to stop this from happening. I haven't heard Loretta Lynch say that, strangely enough. I haven't heard Obama mention it. He dashed off to a fundraiser with the important people from Hollywood. Savage. <laughs> 